How to Smoke Salmon by Sarah Frick. We went fishing on the Kenai River this year in Kenai, Alaska for a dip net season, July 2009. We caught a lot of red salmon. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with your salmon. We vacuum sealed a lot of them fresh after we filleted them up and a lot of them we decided to smoke. The first thing you want to do is mix up a marinade or brine. The basic ingredients are one cup brown sugar, one cup sea or kosher salt that is uniodized, three tablespoons garlic minced is the best, and two quarts of water. There are many different recipes you can use for the marinade or brine, as they call it. On this particular occasion, I was using Bold and Spicy Bloody Mary mix that was already mixed along with some cayenne pepper, and I also used some other Worcestershire uh, Bloody Mary mix, pre-made mix that bartenders use. Um, another recipe I used for the smoking was a chopped up red jalapeno peppers, which was really good. You want your marinade to cover your fish, so you want to go ahead and add enough water, usually about two quarts of water, to where uh, the fish is covered. And we use these red Rubbermaid containers. They seem to work pretty well. You're going to want to let your fish marinate for about 8 to 12 hours in the refrigerator covered. That's where the Tupperware containers come in good. So when you're done, you want to just Pour out your brine or your marinade into the sink or whatever you have available. You want to rinse off all the pieces with cold water. Go ahead and rinse off if they're going to feel a little slimy. Rinse off both sides. I like to put my salmon down with the skin up. It makes it a lot easier to get it off the rack after it's smoked. A little less mess. You want to leave it on the rack and let it dry out for about an hour. Um, just to let it air dry before you start smoking it. This is the smoker that we own. It's called a Big Chief. It runs about, nowadays, $90. We got this one at Fred Meyer. It is electric. There are a lot of different smokers. Some of them aren't electric. Some of them can be wood-fired. Um, it has a pan. You use wood chips for the smoking. I like to use otter chips. On this particular occasion, uh, you, we couldn't find hardly any alder chips in town because it's dip netting season, so we bought half alder and a half cherry chips. This seemed to work pretty well. So fill your pan with chips and put it on the electric burner, as you can see here. Stick your racks of salmon in after they've dried out for about an hour. Make sure the lid is on nice and tight and go ahead and plug it in. Now it's going to take about 20 minutes after you plug it in for it to start smoking. Here we are with it smoking. Oh, here's a quick break. View from my rooftop. Mountains, Anchorage Hillside. Alaska is a pretty nice place to live. BP Energy Building, Midtown on Anchorage. Anyways, here we are with it smoking. Um, it's going to start smoking after about 25 minutes. The formula I like to use is the first three hours of smoking, put a new pan of chips in in every hour. Then every two to three hours, put another pan of chips in. For up to eight hours, some people go up to ten, I like to keep it at around eight hours total. So here we are in the middle of the night checking on the salmon. It's starting to look pretty good. The skin's starting to look pretty golden. It's dedication people, middle of the night. You want to just pour out your ashes. Don't go ahead and put chips over the ashes. Pour out the ashes, put a new pan in. This is towards my last pan here. After your last pan is smoked for about an hour, you want to go ahead and unplug the smoker and let it cool down for an hour. Here we are a few hours later in the wee hours of the morning. Taking my salmon out. Some people like to let it cool outside of the smoker. I prefer to go ahead and take it inside and get it going and get it packaged up. It's a lot easier to get off the rack that way. 
Here's our final product, looking pretty good. Nice golden skin on the outside. Check out the inside. Looks pretty good, looks moist, not too dry. Some people like it more done, more like jerky. I like it about this consistency. I package my salmon facing each other with the skin on the outside on top of each other. This way, if there's any small bones or gristle, that it doesn't puncture through when you go to vacuum seal it and ruin the vacuum seal. Small tip, place a towel underneath your package when you go to vacuum seal. This way it provides somewhat of um, a lift for a stage so that you get a better seal. You also want to hold the sides of the package as it seals. Um, just keep it pulled out. Better chance that it's not going to ruin the seal. When you're done vacuum sealing, go ahead and label your meat. Label the month, the day, the year. Even if you think you're going to remember, do it anyways. <laughs> Sometimes meat can be in your freezer for a long time. You really want to know how long it's been in there. I'm writing homemade HM Bloody Mary. Sometimes we buy store-bought. I like to keep track of what flavor each package is so that when I eat it I can remember what brine I used, what marinade I used, if it was store-bought or if I homemade it and I usually write down my recipes. The rule of thumb I like to go by is sealed. The salmon can stay good in the refrigerator about one to two weeks. I've got some fresh salmon and some smoked salmon in there to eat over the next couple weeks. In the freezer you can leave salmon frozen, sealed, vacuum sealed about two years. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you learned a little something about smoking salmon. Now go catch some fish.